Hello, this is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and we're going to be looking at how we can quickly set up a high pass filter in Silhouette and how we can start to use frequency separation to add a little bit of pop to an image or how we can use it in a wider workflow to help to fix up some skin without losing that nice skin detail. Okay, let's take a look at our first clip. And this actually seems sharp enough. What I'm going to do is just zoom in here. And all I want is just to add a little bit of extra pop to the fine details here in the hair. And the way I'm going to do it is using a high pass filter. So what's the first filter we need when we want to make something a bit sharper? Yep, that's right. It's a blur. Let's come to the filter and we're going to add a blur to this here. Because what I want to do is separate out the different frequencies in this image. And we're going to use this blur to actually isolate out the areas we want. So once we've got the blur in place, I'm going to come into color and we're just going to invert it. There we go. So, so far, looking really nice. We're not sharp yet, but we're getting there. We need to just add another couple of notes. So now what I want to do is I want to mix this back with our original image. And so let's come into our composite nodes here and I'm going to use just a simple mix. So just apply that to the invert with the invert as input one and our original image as input two. And because the mix defaults to 50%, so we've got an equal mix of the original and this blurred and inverted, this is what we're going to get. So now we've basically got a gray image. And if I come over to my blur here and just start adjusting that up, you can see that some of the frequencies are passing through and some of the frequencies are being cut out. And the smaller I have this blur, the higher the frequencies are that are being allowed to pass and everything else is just remaining the same. If I bring this up, you can see more and more stuff is being let through. So we're getting more of the image there. Cool. Well, let's take that to, we'll take that actually fairly high. We'll take that to about five. So we can easily see the effect. And now we've got to find a way of mixing this back over the top of my original image. Now, in other applications, you would use a blend mode like um, overlay or soft light. But if we take a look in the math composite node, we don't have that type of blend mode available to us. So at first glance, you might think we're stuck. Let's get rid of that math composite node. But actually, we do have it. It's just hidden in another one of our nodes. And it's actually hidden in the grain composite node. So if I bring my grain composite in, and in the input, I'm going to bring in my original image. And in my grain, I'm going to take the output of that mix. And you can see now, if I mix that back and forth, down to zero, all the way to 100 down to zero, all the way to 100. So you can see we're starting to build up that sharpness back in, although that detail I should say back into the high frequency areas. If I bring my blur up or down, you can also see how that's affecting things. So if I take the blur to about seven, there we go, seven, seven, five, we've actually brought out a lot more of the skin details here, skin texture here, as well as bringing in some more detail into the eyelashes and hair. Let's come back into the grain composite, down to before and after, before and after. It's mixed a little bit harshly at the moment, but that's, that's fine. I'll just take that down to what, around about five, maybe, maybe even less, take, take that back to about four. Let's take a look at that before and after, before and after. Just enough just to give it a little bit of a pop without overblowing everything. So let's take the output now and we can add the output to the end of our tree. Now, this is a high pass filter that I use quite often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a little node tree that I can just save out and then reuse time and time again. So it's going to be a big time saver. So I don't have to add in all of these nodes and connect them all up. Now, a little hint for when you are going to be doing this, when you want to recycle a lot of these nodes and you've got 
different nodes all being fed by the same input. So you can see this one uh, input here is feeding the blur, it's feeding the mix, and it's also feeding the grain composite. A good way of saving a little bit of time is just to add another node at the top here that will then be the one that you feed the input into. And it doesn't have to be a clever node. In fact, the simpler it is, the better. I'm just going to add a swap channels into here, right at the very top. And then I'm going to feed the swap channels in to the other nodes there. So now, when we reuse this little tree here, all we have to do is feed that input into one node rather than having to feed it into three. And we can rename these as well. Call this one high pass input. We can call this radius instead. Invert is still inverting. Mix is still mixing back. And this grain composite. I call this one high pass composite. So we know what's what. So let's get these in you know relatively interesting area. And I'm just going to select all the ones I want. And I'm going to come up and save these nodes out. And I'm going to come into the folder I want, and I will call this one high pass. And let's come into our second shot. Okay, so here we go. We've got another close up face. Find a good frame there. And I'm going to load those in. So load, high pass. There they all come. And now, because of the way that I've set this up, I just have to feed that input in just to there, and everything else will just mix down nicely for me. I can even add this into the output. We'll see the before and after. I might want to just increase the radius just a little bit on this one, just so we can see this a bit more, uh, a bit more clearly before and after. We don't need too much, just going to give it a little bit more pop. But Ben, I hear you saying out there, why are we going through all of this just to add a little bit of sharpness? We already have, you know, a sharpen filter built in anyway that we can sort of add a little bit of sharpness to our image with uh, anyway. And that's true. We do have a, a sharpen here and this will add sharpness. But high pass does it in a slightly different way because not only are we adding sharpness to the image here, because the way we've created this sharpness, we separated out the high frequencies, so the stuff with the hair and the, the texture on the skin, but we've also got a nice place to deal with the low frequencies as well. So in this case, the base of the skin, not the texture on top, but the, the stuff that's lying underneath. So if I add another node in here, let's come over to Diffusion and let's say, well, let's add a frost filter in. And I'm going to add the frost filter in before the input on the high pass composite. And if we preview the frost here, you can see at the default settings, we've smoothed everything out, sort of made it a nice sort of glow on the skin there. But if we add too much smoothing, we end up losing all of the details. So the eyelashes sort of just disappear and the hair just disappears. But let's see what happens when we look at the high pass composite now. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. So because we've still got our texture, our high frequency texture over on this side, we can actually be a bit more aggressive on the lower frequencies than we otherwise could be. So I'm going to just view the high pass composite node here whilst I'm adjusting the parameters on my frost node. So we can do that, maybe add just a touch more brightness in there. So we've got the before and the after, before and after. And here's what the frost would look like without that frequency separation. So you see it's looking a little bit softer there. And if you don't want to use frost, another interesting one to use if we come over to filter would also be detail. And I'm going to put that again just before the high pass composite. Let's just move these over so it's a little bit clearer to see where the separation is on that one. There we go. So we come into detail. And oftentimes you'd use the detail to sort of bring detail up in the image. So whether that's coarse detail, 
of that fine detail there. But we're not going to do that. And in fact, we're not even going to preview what that's looking like. I'm going to have a look at the high pass composite again. So view that whilst adjusting the detail here. And I'm going to bring the detail down significantly. In fact, I'm going to bring it all the way down on the course details. I'm going to start bringing it down a bit on the fine details. And then I'll adjust the medium details right at the very end. I mean, I could take that all the way down there, but I, I want to make sure that I'm preserving some of the other details in there. There we go. And for something like this, I might also maybe make sure it's not affecting the highlight areas quite as much. I'm going to adjust the ranges where it's being affected to. So we keep the shadow areas all the way up. So it sort of smooths out those shadows a bit, evens out the skin. We sort of take the highlights down a little bit there. So this is what the detail would look like without the high pass. So there's the original. There's the detail. So it looks like we've got sort of optical mist filter in front, sort of softening everything out a little bit. But because we've got the high pass over on the other side, when we put those two sides together, we get a nice finished image. High pass. Original, detail node set to negative numbers to reduce the detail. And then using our high frequencies just to bring back the details there. And the cool thing is, let's just disconnect that a little bit so that we can keep this nice and clean. Yeah, the cool thing is now, if I want to do anything else, want to do something more with this, uh, maybe I'll add a paint node into the middle here. Let's make sure it's going to the right place. Yep, and we will keep previewing out the high pass there. If we go to clone on this side of the tree, let's just make this a little bit bigger. Come over here. I can be cloning out different areas without affecting the actual structure within that skin. And I can gently blur out little color blemishes as well. So you've got a lot of flexibility with this technique. And of course, when you're happy with it, you can just select those nodes, group them together, and then simply build onwards as you need to. Compare and contrast that with the regular Sharpen. We've got a little bit more flexibility going on using the frequency separation mode. And that's how we can start to set up and use frequency separation within Silhouette. My name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and I'll see you again in another tutorial.